Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday. In today's episode, I'm gonna help you buy and choose your first DSLR. So let's dive right into it. So these are the three factors that you have to pay attention to. First cause, this is your first tool. It's not supposed to be the best. It's supposed to, you know, help you learn the ropes and it's all that's supposed to do. So please do not overspend on your first equipment. Learn the equipment, then buy a better equipment. Second, uh, this part is uh, quite often neglected is that you have to choose a camera that has very high usability factor. Like in modern day, uh, it would be like having touchscreen, it's a compulsory factor. And third, but not the least, is performance. Like don't buy so cheap that it does not have the performance. So these three crucial aspects and in this order, because it has to be affordable, obviously, and it has to be usable after that you choose about performance because if you start going from performance you will be like okay this camera is no good this camera is no good this camera unless you spend a lot of money so in this order you can you know narrow down your search so what to look for of course it's dslr the slr part is not that important the most important part is that it is interchangeable lens camera to make sure that you can actually you know get something please do not buy kit lens like kit lens is not bad but it requires you to have a very thorough understanding of how to get images out of a lens that's already kind of you know meh it's not bad but it's it's not it's not great either so please make sure you consider lens first then you have to understand uh, focusing stem this is the uh, very easy to discern because if you buy a cheap Canon DSLR some of them must have a very ancient nine point autofocus system for the viewfinder and some have 55 points so you can easily you know gauge how good or bad a system is so focusing system matters because like let's say you have a okay kind of lens with okay sharpness and uh, your focus system is uh, you know spot on you're gonna get two images good images but you have a very sharp lens but your uh, you know autofocus misses so focus does matter after that you have to choose for uh, ease of use now these are the few components that you should pay attention to first is at a screen because nowadays everybody is coming from a smartphone you need it not that you cannot live without it is your camera will become a paperweight if you try to do it and then this uh, flip out screen and uh, because we live in a selfie world whether you like it or not this sort of thing uh, matters a lot and it's very important for videography and I'm using it as we speak. So these are the few components that you can look for. So by narrowing down all the data I have provided for the first beginner Canon seems to be the best you know, choice. Why I'm saying that first it has a very good lens selection. It and Nikon has almost the same lens connection so it has a very good lens connection. And second, it has good interface. Now, this is where Nikon, you know, shifts the bed. Basically, Nikon does not even give you preview uh, exposure in your live view. And they have very, very terrible live view focusing system. And uh, you might say, Sony, here's the problem. It does not have good lens choice. Panasonic and uh, Fuji, same. They, they are more geared toward like Panasonic is specifically geared toward video vloggers. And the camera quality is not bad by any means. It's just that if you compare it to uh, Canon APS-C you will be like yeah for photography specifically you will be happy with a Canon camera and there is something uh, you know classic about a big DSLR not a heavy one but a big DSLR and this uh, third part is very important is third party support for Canon is quite high like for instance uh, for Canon you can easily buy a remote that allows you to do intervalometry and basically you know time-lapse photography because they have a port that is so simple that you can build it at yourself it's basically old uh, headphone jack it's a uh, normal headphone jack is 2.5 mm that's 1.5 uh, 2.5 mm is the headphone jack that Canon accepts and normal headphone jack is 3.5 mm so uh, using uh, these third-party accessories like remote and uh, magic lantern and all there are a lot of uh, other supports that you can do it allows you to use your camera to its full extent so third party support matters this is where sony is almost zero like nikon because it's been you know going around for so long they have it it's just not pushed to the same level like if you get magic lantern on your uh, dslr however it does void warranty so please be mindful of that unless you really really into high quality video footage it's not going to give you that much of advantage 
and there I'm, I'm recommending some lens selection i'm recommending 18 to 135 not 18 to 55 because that lens while kit lens is not horrible if they are uh, keep reducing the aperture so at this point you're gonna be very disappointed and everybody expects that you know you're gonna take a dslr photo you want shallow background you're not gonna get it so suffice to say if you buy 18 to 135 you get range at least you feel like you know when you are zooming in it's not like 3x zoom this is 5x zoom lens and if you want very if you do a lot of you know outdoor photography environment photography building photography you're gonna you can buy this 17 to 50 uh, 17 to 50 millimeter sigma lens this is f 2.8 constant so it does not shrink down so these are two good lenses to get you started uh, if you are like very new i would suggest you go with 18 to 135 and if you are like serious about photography a uh, brighter aperture of sigma matters and these two lenses are relatively cheap so and uh, i cannot understand like you can get any camera even sony cameras but their autofocus system does not match up to dual pixel autofocus like it's not day and night but of course in from nikon to canon you'll be like dude is this made even in the same year or same technology so all things considered all the six variable i mentioned in the earlier slides all things considered canon at this point provides you the best bang for your buck now let's say i recommended the lens which camera you can buy 800d 7070d these are quite good and i'm reasonably sure in next year they're gonna release a new one so as of now as of making this video all things considered canon is the best starting point for a beginner photographer so that was my presentation hope you guys liked it learn from it in that case please like if you didn't dislike leave a comment subscribe press the bell icon so you can get notified every day thanks for watching